from tonight. So I think my slide is up. Let me make sure I'm up on all my platforms. Let's see here. Let's see here. Um, no, no, where's my live videos? I see it. So it's Friday night. And uh, it has been raining all day here in Seattle. I know. Big, fat shocker. Okay, good. Nope, nope. Ah. <laughs> good Lord. What is wrong with me tonight? Linda is on. I want to. Linda is on, Ray said. Lawrence. Lauren. Lawrence from Ohio. I don't, I don't want to. Mom, just redo Facebook. Sorry, guys. Um, Missy. Missy from Redmond, Ray said. Everybody say hi to Ray. <laughs> she has one. She sneezed a little bit ago, and she has, like, this super scary sneeze. Not kidding. Oh, everybody's here. Okay, good. Okay, you guys, we are going to have some fun tonight. How do I get this? I'm sorry, guys, I'm on. Um, What's wrong? I'm trying to see my comments on. on um, and if I click in, it just is. Okay, there we go. All right, if you are joining me from YouTube, I can now see your comments. Please feel free to say hey and tell me where you're from. Mom is on. Hello, Mom from Texas. And Nancy is on from Lake Stevens. Hi, guys. We are going to have some fun. Oh, Grandma says hello, Reagan Dearest. <laughs> and Becky's on, too, from Texas. Woo, you guys, it has been a crazy week this week. I mean, um, hang on, join me. We, okay, so this week started out with a plan. Oh, Bonnie's on. Hi, Bonnie. Did you get, I saw your messages about what you're going to do for your little featherweight. I say that is the best way to do that. Start with just doing some basic cleaning, and um, I think you should be good. Bonnie was having some speed problems with her little featherweight, so. All right. Uh, oh, and Bonnie Pelton says, hi, Ray. <laughs> oh, look, she's commenting for me. She's worth her weight in gold. Hi, Katie. Are you watching from the hospital or are you home? Oh, that's tomorrow. Okay, you'll be working on your machine tomorrow. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Oh, and Jennifer's on from Alabama. Happy Friday. I've got some fun stuff going on this week. So I had some meetings. Um, I, this, the sew along for those of you joining me, <laughs> Katie says happy Friday for those of you joining me for the sew along, it's going really well. And I really am kind of proud of, of my featherweight tribe. Oh, she's still in the hospital. Oh, I'd be out tomorrow. Yay. Um, I'm, I'm proud of you guys for, for trying some new stuff with your featherweights, for asking it to do things you've never asked it to do before. And, and really kind of realizing the fully robust power of these little workhorses. And I don't want to lose that momentum. So I'm putting, <laughs> you're on the winning end. Your test results came out good. Yay. <laughs> I don't want to lose this momentum that we've, um, that we'll have by the time we finish this in eight weeks, which will be around Thanksgiving. So I'm working on, I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag. Some of you all, I have had some dear conversations with some um, very supportive friends across the country this week, and I feel like uh, very comfortable about the direction I want to move in. So there's there's going to be some exciting stuff coming next year. Um, some partnering with some uh, regional designers, and, and the quilt as you go will continue. And Lisa's on from Connecticut, and Kay from Knoxville. Kay, are you one of my new friends that I met this week at on my um, on my little chat with that featherweight group? I think. I think that might be the same Knoxville. And Pam Green is on. Hi, Pam Green and Grace and um, 
hope I hope you guys are listening. So <clears throat> I uh, I wanted to finish up. I started this quilt last weekend. I was bored Saturday morning. My whole family was sleeping in. That's what they do around here. I'm the early bird. Me and the dog. And so we um, I came down. To the studio <clears throat> and I put this little guy together this is part of the journey to nebula that I'm doing in preparation for the nebula block of the month next year Jaybird quilts is is the designer she's put together the journey to nebula um, and she's using Tula Tula pink I'm her biggest fan uh, she is using her fabrics um, and so the preparation for the big block of the month is um, this journey to nebula which includes six patterns so you have seaside was week one you have um, well rock candy is actually later I'm I'm out of order so rock candy I think lucky charm is next it's a pillow topper and then jawbreaker so all my patterns finally showed up I bought, purchased these from so thankful.com uh, candy dish is also coming up and then gazebo all right so I've got all of my Texas hi Julia from Texas thanks for joining me um, and Kathy Heiss is here too hi my dear so anyway uh, I'm gonna be tackling one of these in the shop this week and then I probably will be quilting it by next Friday I'm hoping I do have an update too on um, on some previous projects that we've worked on. Do you guys remember my big tulip, uh, tulip pink bed quilt? I am rounding third plate. Lawrence, you'll appreciate the sports reference. I think you're my only, only gentleman on here. So this is, um, <clears throat> here are my blocks that have my pink, my pink blocks. And then there's also a neutrally gray color palette. And then the blue is the last one. Look at how cute. So this is the first of the last set of blocks. The rest of them are sitting here. Oh, I got thread everywhere. So they're gonna be all together, hopefully this week too. And then I'll have my big guy uh, done. This is a big 99, I believe, square, so I'm probably gonna do it on a long arm. Hi, Bryce. Good to see you, my friend. Um, because it's just too big to, to tackle on the, um, on, well, anything else. A 99 square, send it to your long armor. So that, those have, I've been working on over the summer on and off with you guys. What else? Oh, so I was super inspired because uh, this week is Lucky Charm. And it requires, according to the back, that everybody can see publicly. By the way, let me just disclaim that this is not my intellectual creative property it belongs to uh, Jaybird quilts um, but anyway it requires one charm pack so I do have the homemade line obviously because I made I made this up with it but I thought how fun look what I picked up today uh, ghouls and goodies it's a Halloween Halloween um, Charm pack. So how cute is this going to be? I'm going to do um, one of the table toppers in rock candy in this with a black background. And then I'm going to do, <laughs> Jennifer wants to know what I'm sipping. Chardonnay, usually. Uh, this is an oak Chardonnay. It's pretty good, actually. Jan is here from Texas. Bonnie Pelton said, striking colors in the table mat. Thank you, my friend. Uh, and Sue Ballard, <laughs> Sue, Sue Ann, you are the one that got me to get on the on the YouTube comments, and now you're on Facebook. Girl child, <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Oh, it's so fun to see that charm back. And then I also got All Howl's Eve, which is a more proper. It looks more proper. It's by Joanna Figura from Fig Tree and Co. But it's a little bit more like um, it's it's not so kiddish. What's the word? Dignified. It's more dignified. <laughs> so anyway, these are going to be my my um, Halloween table toppers. I realized last weekend when I pulled out my Halloween quilts as part of my my fall decor 
that I didn't have any actual like table runners or table toppers. But we need to rectify that. All right. Oh, Becky, <laughs> look at my nails. Okay, if you know me, green is my favorite color. Like, they would never ever ask me to judge a quilt show. It's so sophisticated, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Bryce. They would never ask me to, uh, to like judge a quilt show because I would literally give all of the blue ribbons to the green quilts. The color just sings to me. So I was at the nail person this week and I said, she asked me three times, you sure? You sure you want green? I'm like, yes, I am very sure I want that color green. <laughs> And I love it. <laughs> it's good because it will be on there for three weeks. So I better love it. All right. Let's see. Oh, Suzanne likes my nails too. Good. So the rain and the gloom and doom has officially set here in, in the Pacific Northwest. I'm hoping that um, the smoke didn't chase away what little rest of the summer we had. It has been pouring on and off all week long. I don't know if there's any signs of it stopping. Which is hard for me because when I moved to Arizona for four years, I realized I really like the sun. <laughs> All right, so let's get going on this table topper. I have my sample little fabric on. Ray is going to um, cut back and forth between the machine camera and, and uh, my front facing camera. So, anyway, I just want to make sure I'm tensioned right. And I know this will shock everybody, but I have my school bell out again. I really need to stop picking favorites. It's not fun. There are plenty. I actually should get the black side down, but honestly, I need to spend a little time going through it and make sure it's oiled and lubricated properly before I sew with it because it hasn't seen any attention in a long time. And if your machine has sat for longer than a month, you need to keep that in mind before you do any type of of uh, major sewing on it that you need to go through and do all of the oil and lubrication points and make sure that it's well lubricated before you get it cranked up. Oh, there's there's lots of friends on here who like green. Okay, Deanne likes green. See, Jennifer, green, yes. <laughs> My mom wants to know if there's any more forest fires. I think the rain has pretty much put out all the forest fires considering how it hasn't stopped. So, okay, my machine is tensioned properly. So I can go over here. I'm using a lime green thread because I really wanted it to pop out. So that is what we are doing. Let's see here, I wanna do this, okay. So I was out and about today um, because I needed to meet some customers and drop off some parts and I was able to see some friends in Issaquah and then um, let's see I was at Gisipium in Issaquah, I was at uh, Issaquah Sew and Back, I was at that's where I got those cute little charm packs actually is it Issaquah Sew and Back or Sew and Back and then at APQ US, APQS Northwest which is the kind of long arm I have back here um, my friend Barb there has uh, saw me using some of my tools and she wanted a set for herself. So I dropped them off. Um, hey, would you mind getting um, some eye drops out of the front of my purse in the front po pocket? I'm sorry. Thank you. You know what, I'm, what pouch I'm talking about? My eyes are dry this afternoon. Or I'll just go get the ones upstairs. Oh, blue. Lauren says blue is his favorite color. First for face color and then green is a second. <gasps> and Sarah's on from So SEW Much Charm. You have been posting some beautiful fabrics on your Facebook page. Very tempting, girl. Is your subscription service going really good? Sarah joined me on one of my shop talks a, a while ago. Thank you. 
guys. so much charm shop thank you our vip club is sold out for october and that's amazing congratulations So this week, guys, I got to have my first club, Federate Club, in eight months in Snohomish. So Snohomish County here in Washington is allowing more um, meeting, if you will. We still had to obviously have our masks on. We had to um, have our six feet of social distancing. Basically, everybody had their huge eight foot table to themselves. But they people came out and I got to say hi and be in a room with my people. I was so excited that I almost didn't sleep the night before. And I literally almost cried. <laughs> For someone that used to teach um, two, three classes a week between machine quilting and um, between machine quilting and featherweight stuff, and to go from that much to nothing has been very difficult for me so it was so good to be around people and actually ironically it was people i've all met through here uh oh it says facebook is having trouble did i lose facebook let me just make sure nope you're out there still it was just buffering for a second cool all right did i miss anybody Oh, Deanne Hartman's like free free motion for the featherweight. Yes, ma'am. That's what I'm doing right now. I've got my special free motion foot that we sell on our website, and I've got um, I have covered my feed dogs on this two two one because obviously you can't drop them. They're stationary, and I am just stitching away here. There's a whole video, Deanne, on um, on YouTube. It's about a seven-minute video, and it talks about the whole setup of it. It's actually one of our older videos. It's me and my Minnie Mouse featherweight, the red machine with the white polka dot. Oh, good. Debbie says, nope, you're still on Facebook. Okay, good. <laughs> Mom, which video was it? It was the video on... Um, was on the YouTube and it, it's me with Minnie in the caption and it has like 20 or 30,000 views. Are you looking forward to link it? Mm -hmm. um, Deanne, Ma, or Mom, Ray's gonna link it for you so you can see the setup video. I don't see Sarah it. said, free motion on the featherweight is awesome. You have to try it if you've never done it. Oh, free motion? Amen, amen sister. <laughs> my mom says you're a social butterfly like the rest of the ladies in our family yes yes I do I do like to be around my people
Sarah Ray, did, Ray linked it for you, Deanne. Oh, hi, Kathy from Kirkland Quilter. Uh, Lawrence, did you ever get my package this week? It should be here. It should be to you at, by the beginning of um, next week at the latest, I would think. You'll have to let me know. Don't mess up my own pattern here. My own clothing pattern, that is. So in addition to hanging out with you guys tonight, <gasps> hi Carla, I am excited. I've been looking forward to this week all uh, all week because tonight, all week because we are seeing some friends that we have not seen since COVID hit. <laughs> Sue Ann Ballard said, I'm a social butterfly too. <laughs> I knew I liked you, Sue Ann, I knew it. Um, so our, these friends of ours were worked with a, Andy and the husband worked back in the day together, and um, he actually, not funny at all, very seriously had a heart attack last year and ended up having to have a heart transplant. And so um, because of the fact that he is a heart transplant donor, things get really crazy with him with COVID if he comes down with it. And so he, they have been in hard in their houses for like eight months. And... I, uh, so we haven't been able to see them. And so we're actually going to see them tonight. I'm so excited. Uh, we love them. Love them. Oh, Lawrence said, no, not yet, Darlene. We'll absolutely let you know. Fabulous. I left you a bunch of little notes, little sticky notes on the patterns that I sent you. Um, Deanne wants to know, how do you hold your layers together? So I had this pinned earlier when um before i had all my stitching and now i'm on my outer layer do you guys see all of the stitching so now i don't have to have i i had it pin basted but now i've removed most of the pins because um i'm to the point where i'm just on the outer edge but so i just pin base them usually on the floor i crawl around on the floor to pin base them um because it's these are too small for my long arm and i actually if you have this pattern, yours will look a little different because I made my outer edges bigger because I wanted it to be, I have a big um, table in the dining room and then a, a circular, t like smaller kitchen table. And I wanted this, to, this topper to fill most of my kitchen table circle. So, and I also wanted to give myself a little bit more room to, you know, be super artsy with it. So <clears throat> I made my borders extra big. <laughs> yes, they are so important. She said, friends are so important at this time. Agreed, my friend. Oops, I missed one. Dang it. I have to scooch over. I missed a little whoop-de-doo. Great. All right, here was I. Keep on going. Oops. Yes. 
Deanne asked a question. Oh, okay. Thanks for joining me, guys. Do you ever use spray, spray adhesive? Okay. I do have a very specific opinion, Deanne, about spray adhesive. And it's just my own opinion. Some people swear by it. I don't care for the spray adhesive because um, it, I've used it in my modern machine, the Bernina, and it has the, specifically the June Taylor one, the basting spray one, and it has gotten on the needle, you know, the, the gummy stuff has gotten on the needle, and then it has got, gotten down and stuck in the innards of my machine, and it has broken some things. So I've used it twice, it did it both times, so I personally do not use the spray adhesive. I like the pin basting method better. Um, it does, it's more cumbersome, it hurts my little fingers. They do have that quick sit, quick, quick sit um, pin opening and closing device, and that helps, I think, a lot with my fingertips. But, um, and that's another good point. Yeah, Deanne said that um, she finds that the spray gums up her needle and it smells Sue horrible. Anne. Pardon me? Oh, Sue Ann said that, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ray corrected me. <laughs> Got to keep her mom on the straight and narrow. <laughs> so that's that's my own opinion. I know people that swear by it. So, but that's been my experience with it. I I don't think I'd use it on a featherweight just because that would be my fear is that I'd be sitting there with alcohol and a Q-tip, getting all of it out of the innards of my machine. So this machine is my 1934 school bell, and I found I picked up a machine today from my friend that lives in Sammamish, which is kind of like by Issaquah, Washington, and um, it is her twin. They actually were born in the same lot, second production run ever in 1934. So I thought that was fun. Uh, Jeanette and I have twin machines, since I'm a twin and all. Sue Ann agrees pin basting is better. wants to know on Instagram if I, if I use the Supreme slider. I do have one. I do love my Supreme slider. I do not have it on right now, but I do use it and I love it. So what, just in case everybody doesn't know what this is, um, the Supreme slider is a Teflon. It's a, it's like a window cling. It's like a skating rink on one side and a window cling on the back and it creates a zero friction environment for be able for being able to fluidly move your fabric under the needle of the machine i actually think on the featherweight it might might work even better for uh the um for the free motion quilting than on the modern machines because in uh where you can't cover you have to cover your feed dogs up on this 221 i use blue painters tape um, real expensive little uh, notion I buy at the uh, hardware store. Um, the, the Supreme slider would actually help to cover the, the tape up and, and again, provide a secondary level of uh, protection with the machine grabbing underneath. 
So, <clears throat> oh, here we, lots of posts. Okay, Deanne wants to know, will you have to get your twins together for a sewing session? As soon as Jeanette and I can uh, be in the same room together with, you know, and, and not have to sit six feet apart with our masks, it's happening. I know it's happening. Oh, here she is right here. <laughs> Sue Ann said, will you ever have a 221 featherweight shop, workshop I'd like next spring or summer? I would come. Actually, um, Sue Ann, they're starting up next month. Uh, Snohomish County is a phase beyond our King County numbers, and I'm allowed to have one. So they're cut they were starting up again i'm so excited um i'll be i haven't updated my calendar on my website yet because there's no there's just like some clubs that i've started up here again but as soon as i start getting some solid dates like i will be one of the virtual speakers and vendors at the sew expo in february 2021 i'm going to start putting things back on my calendar again and so soon you can see when my workshops will be and where they'll be um, Jeanette, who is the owner of my 1934 twin, says, my mom is a twin. I didn't know your mom was a twin. That's fun. Her husband, Mark, and I are always asking about the ultrasound technicians, and are you sure you're the only one loving having a twin machine with you? That is funny. So, <laughs> my, so Jeanette, my mom is on, so she'll back me up. Um, she didn't know she was having twins. My sister and I were a surprise. She thought she was going into the hospital to have one baby and then landed up leaving with two identical twin girls. Can you even imagine? They, they didn't do ultrasounds back then when I was born um, unless they suspected something was wrong. And there, there wasn't any reason to suspect anything was wrong except my poor mother, who was tiny, tiny, was huge, huge with two seven-pound babies. So anyway, it's funny because I can't imagine having delivered my sister first because I'm three minutes younger than her, you know, them telling her, oh, you've got another baby in there. Um, no, I don't. <laughs> but that was me. Yay. <laughs> I can't believe my mother isn't chiming in. But what you doing, Mom? Are you asleep at the wheel? It's super late, remember? <laughs> Facebook's always later. <clears throat> okay. Just a few more rounds here. Oh, okay, here we go. My mom is finally chiming in. Okay, so I was a shocker. I'm surprised your dad didn't faint <laughs> when he came to the hospital afterwards. That would have been bad. so you can see it.
Your grandma said that. Oh, my mom said that. My older sister, Deb, prayed for a tri triplet so we each could have a baby to hold. <laughs> I think twins was a big enough surprise. Can you imagine triplets? Holy moly. Oh, <laughs> Deanne says, you make that look easy. I've been doing it a little bit for, for a little bit uh, longer than most. So, and I absolutely love the quilting um part of sewing of, of quilting not i mean not just the piecing and the fabrics and stuff they definitely kind of sing to me but um but this is actually my favorite part If you guys hear a dog whining in the background, he's fine. It, does anybody else have a lab? We have a black lab rogue. He's often on my um, my social media stuff. He um, knows by the ache in his belly when it is dinner time. And he's whining right now in the stairs because it's 4.37 and he knows he eats at 5. And as our days get shorter and our and the, it starts to get darker earlier, he will get confused what time of day it is because he thinks it's time to eat. It is not time to eat, Mr. Rogue. Jennifer said, I sure would love to live closer so I could come to a spa day and, <laughs> and workshop. I love my feather weight. And would love to be more confident working on her. Sadly, right now, she is locked up. Oh, got to get to work. Well, thanks for joining me, Jennifer. Uh, maybe by hanging out with me, I'll give you a little bit of confidence. And you can pull her out and have some fun. I have tons of content and video on cleaning and lubricating. And, and maybe someday we'll be in a class together some, at some point. That would be fun. <laughs> My mom said, actually, everyone but the doctor and I thought I was having twins because I look like a torpedo ready to launch. Thank you. Oh, oh, Kirkland Quilter says we have a black uh, lab, Liberty. Does Liberty tell you what time it is and when she would like to be fed? Because Rogue is like clockwork. Oh, Sue Ann said, I love the, the tulip pink fabric. So cool. Me too, sister. <laughs> oh yeah they're terrible aren't they he's literally in the hallway right now whining like he hasn't had any food he had breakfast this morning mm. he also liked to share my lunch and reagan's lunch and he is not yeah he is not starving by any stretch
Yes, Rogue. My mom wants to know if Rogue is working hard at being a guard dog all day. Mm -hmm. We call it the Paw Patrol. He sits on Reagan's bed, which overlooks the street and takes a nap ten times a day. And then, um, oh, sorry, guys, hang on. And then uh, occasionally sits up and looks over at the road and nothing's going on on the cul-de-sac, so he falls back asleep again. That's his idea of guard, of guarding the house. Um, hang on one sec, guys. Sorry, my thing didn't get charged today. I don't want this to go off. Okay. Sorry. Give a message on Facebook. Okay. What are your thoughts on the quilter's gloves? So I like the Meshingers brand. I've also tried, what are those two ladies' names? Fonz and Porter. I've tried the Fonz and Porter gloves. And I've also just tried the 99 cent gardening gloves. So I, I do like the idea of the gloves because they help to reduce the amount of downward pressure that you have to put on the bed of your machine because if I'm doing this for a while my shoulders top side start to get real sore from the downward pressure um, so the gloves help to reduce some of the fatigue in sitting down in free motion quilting for a long time I, what I like about the machingers over the Fonz and Porter over the gardening gloves is that first of all they're really lightweight and breathable and my hands do get hot I'm I run hot all the time I'm never one of those people that um, is cold never I, I barely wear a jacket in the dead of winter up here in the great Northwest tundra um, but the machingers are super breathable they also are tacky on the finger tips um, the tops and the bottom so once you've kind of worn out the tackiness on one side you can switch gloves and then you have a fresh new set of tacky, um, of tacky uh, nests to help uh, press down on the quilt. Actually, the idea of the gloves is that you'll just be able to put your hands down and the weight of your hands with the gloves is supposed to help push the fabric around versus actually having downward pressure. The Fonz and Porter gloves are only one-sided, at least the pair that I saw. And then the gardening gloves were just too hot. So I know that they're, the gardening gloves were considerably less expensive because I bought them at like a Home Depot or a Lowe's or something. And the machingers are considered a notion and sold at a quilting shop. And so there's that notion premium with them. But, um, but they're really kind of worth their weight in gold. Between the gloves and the Supreme Slider, which is that sheet that sits underneath your project and helps to remove the friction, um, those are great complements to be able to have on hand uh, for, for if you're doing a lot of free motion quilting, both on your modern machine or on your featherweight. So Lauren said, I love other people's dogs and I have never met a retriever model who wasn't a chow hound, right? <laughs> Kathy said, how approximately how many stitches per inch are you doing? Becky said that. Oh, Becky said that. What did I say? Kathy. Yeah, sorry, Becky, I apologize. Um, so look at you with the fancy question. I am attempting to do a 10 to 11 stitch per inch size, which is a uh, industry standard for quilting. Okay, I have a question, Darth Roth. What are you covering your feed dogs with with quilting? I am covering my feed dogs with blue painter's tape. Uh, there is Darth Roth, there's a video on YouTube under Featherweight Doctor, and it's me and a little red and white polka dot machine, and it's the whole setup on how with the Featherweight on how I do the free motion quilting. I encourage you to check it out. It's about a seven minute video. Kathy Heiss says, have you tried the stitch in grips? They work great for me. Uh, I don't like to wear the gloves with them, and your hands are free to remove pins. Yeah, that's another, that's another, um, is this the stitch and grip the one that was developed by Ellen up here in the Pacific Northwest? There are those little things that you slide between your fingers and they're like a foam pad. Those work really well. I know Ellen personally, she did a really good job with the design too. I don't remember if it was Clever Craft Tools or not. And I do like the idea that your hands are free to remove pins as you go. And the gloves definitely make that more cumbersome. So you're welcome, Dark Rock. Thanks for your question. Kathy has a question. Okay. 
that I might not have you answer? I just I think I already answered that. Oh. Okay. Oh, right. Sorry. I'll show you guys my progress here in a minute. Comment on Facebook. Dutch Broth wants to know if it's a darning foot. Yes, it is an aftermarket darning foot that we sell on our website on featherweightdoctor.com. Melanie, hello, girl. I'm so glad I'm with you this week, uh, this evening. I've been working on masks. Good girl. I made a couple masks myself this week, and some co super cool tunics. Love the nails. Thanks. <laughs> I had to do the green. See, they kind of match the quilt. I did that kind of on purpose. Kind of, not really. I just like green. everybody up to tonight dinner plans staying in because it's cool this is my favorite time of year to do a big pot of homemade soup and to kind of eat on it all weekend long I think that is my plan for the morning some machines leave the orphanage this week a very fancy 222 <laughs> Darth Ross said uh, or Dare Roth said soup and everything pumpkin lattes bread bagels oh that sounds amazing we had a fancy 222 go to Michigan this week um, and a um, a very cute little 1953-221 left for Cameron, Texas today. Melanie said, so grand, so steady, sip, sip. <laughs> I have a few things to learn tonight. Packing to drive to Pensacola. Nice, taking my feather right with me. I should hope so. Crocheting a bathroom rug while I watch TV. Linda Wood, I think that sounds like a fabulous idea of spending the weekend. 
are you still painting them? We are not painting them right now. We, um, my husband had the nerve to go get a full-time job, you know, to provide us medical benefits and everything. <laughs> and so I, now that he's working full-time for a big software company up here in the Northwest, I feel guilty asking him to give up his time off on the weekends to help me work. So um, we have one purple machine that still is due out to a customer in central Washington, but right for right now we're on a, a painting hiatus, so. Which is a bummer, because we were supposed to paint a green machine for me before we went on a painting hiatus. Do not even get me started. Alright guys, I think we're coming around to 4.51 and I'm starting to get a little time limit on uh, on my um, Instagram, because they only allow me an hour to hang out with you. So this weekend, I am doing some work here in the studio. I've got some quilts that I want to get out and um, some machines I want to get out. I had all of the service machines piled up on this desk behind me. It looked terrible, so I made Reagan take them down, but there is many service machines. So I think that's how I'm going to be spending my weekend. Long arm will run automatically. I'll be working, you can kind of see my pile over there. Do you see my pile? <laughs> it's time to make the pile get smaller. Um, and then Monday, I will be back with my Ask the Doctor. It's been fun, I'm going to check out your video. Thanks for, for joining us, Dara Roth. I appreciate you uh, checking us out. If you haven't already, go ahead and like the video. Feel free to share the videos with your friends. These videos live forever up on social media land, so. Um, Monday I'll be doing my Ask the Doctor series, uh, quilting questions or featherweight questions or quilting with your featherweight questions. You can email the shop at info, I-N-F-O at featherweightdoctor.com. If you want to see any of the products that I used here for the featherweight, we have a website, featherweightdoctor.com, and we have a full e-commerce shopping cart and all that fun stuff. Uh, next week will be our ninth week. I think we're doing... Uh, Junipine. Junipine AZ block is next month or next week on Wednesday. So that's our quilt as you go so along, which is a free content that we're doing for the weekend. All these blocks up here on the wall behind me are part of it. And we're doing them all piecing and quilting on our featherweights. Very fun. Uh, and then Friday, we'll be right back here with her with the sew along. So I, will, I hope everybody has a great weekend. And I really uh, appreciate the fact that you join me each week so I don't have to sit here by myself talking to myself like a crazy lady and sipping wine. <laughs> Question on Facebook. <laughs> All right, mom says goodbye. A toodaloo. Actually, Melanie says thanks. Hugs till Monday. Bye, Nancy. If you know, do you know if there's a YouTube to show you how to get the thread out of your bobbin area? I'm pretty sure that is my problem with it. And this is the second time. I better use a leader and an ender. Jennifer, um, actually, if you want to send me an email to the info at featherweightdoctor.com email address, I will send you back my, um, I will send you back not the shop number, which you can reach me at over the weekend, and maybe you and I can get on the camera tomorrow and we can figure out your thread problem. Uh, Linda Childers says, what foot can you use for free motioning on your featherweight? So this is the foot that we have, Linda. Let me, let me show you my progress before I let you go real quick too. Made lots of progress tonight. Okay, darling, don't cut the quilt. All right, so here's what we did tonight. Look at how pretty. Can you see the back? I used the light thread so I could really see all of my, I'm gonna clean that up a little bit, but that looks awesome. Here is the foot that we sell. I think it's $11.95 on the website. Works like a charm. It has a spring. Carla, thank you. She says beautiful. Has a spring on it. Anyway, featherweightdoctor.com. Jennifer, send me an email. Oh, thanks, babe. <laughs> Jeanette, thanks for watching. You have a good weekend, too. All right, guys. We'll talk.